actually my favorite time of the year because it is chanterelle mushroom season oh, wow, um, bougie. i'm so bougie. <laughs> i can't help yeah. it um we are talking with sundown mushrooms uh could you be any happier to have sundown mushrooms as an amazing small business here in las vegas they're just blowing up because they have the most beautiful sod right. after um artisanal mushrooms just absolutely incredible. So we're going to be talking to Myrene, one of the owners of Sundown Mushrooms. And so for pandemic provisions, we are mm -hmm. talking mushrooms. And mm -hmm. as I said, my favorite is the Chanterelle. Who thinks it's bougie as fuck. No, but they're super great. They're so I love delicious. Them. Okay, so they're you really- like to brush them? You know, <laughs> they're delicate. super rich in flavor. Um, I, there's all different kinds. I tend to like the ones that are more like woody, earthy, because I always like that woody, earthy flavor. Um, but because there are so many mushrooms, just in general, and chanterelles, um, there are spicy ones. There are ones that people call fruity, even, for chanterelles. Um, read a little history about chanterelle mushrooms. It's actually quite interesting. Um, the reason why they became such a delicacy is because they have to have very specific conditions to grow. Hmm. Um, so they're not found, you know, easily and they don't grow easily. It actually, of course, came to become a delicacy because of, as usual, French culture. Um, back in the 18th century, they started to appear in palace kitchens. So because like kings and queens and dukes and duchesses were eating them, um, you know, just like caviar or fine wines, it became a thing where like, you were really high class if you could have a chanterelle mushroom or chanterelle mushrooms in your dinner. And it is hey. that time of year um, right now in the Western United States where we are, uh, it's chanterelle season from September to February. All right, your mushroom of choice, Louie. Shiitake mushrooms are super flavorful. And they're mm. the only mushroom that I know that you can actually resurrect from the dead, basically, <laughs> from being dry and still taste and like has like a, a texture that's pretty good. Yeah. So the growers for shiitake, the leading growers for shiitake are actually China a title that Japan once held. Yeah, that's Japan what I thought. And here in um, the United States, we grow shiitakes on hardwood logs. So really interesting. Um, love shiitakes, love like the flavors, like you can make a broth or a soup out of it. It's just a very hearty mushroom. So you can store them up fresh in your refrigerator for a week. Mm -hmm. um, Longer than that, they recommend you actually drying them. So drying is actually a great way to preserve them. So yeah. yeah, check them out. Yeah, and dry mushrooms, they're amazing. You can buy dry mushrooms and they'll last a long time like in your pantry and then you can hydrate them when you want to use them. It's a great way to be able to have mushrooms, like different kinds of mushrooms at different times of the year and you know preserve them so that they don't go bad so quickly as many things do here in Vegas. Wow. Um, in Vegas, there's an amazing mushroom urban farm. It's called Sundown Mushrooms. And we thought we loved mushrooms before this, but now that we've actually had the chance to meet with Myrene, um, I think we might be like amateur microfiles at this point. Let's take a mm -hmm. listen. Louis, today we are chatting with Myrene de los Angeles, the owner and grower at Sundown Mushrooms. And all we hear is amazing things about you and your mushrooms. So we're super excited to have you. The chefs around town are super excited to have you in town and selling mushrooms. Thank you for joining us. Oh, well, thanks for having me. 
All right. You grow and run the company with your bae, your boo. Yes. <laughs> uh, how did you two become fungi fanatics? Planting a jackfruit seed once. So I just got it from the grocery store and that, you know, I was eating the fruit and I was like, these seeds, like what if I planted it? Right. And it sprouted and actually grew over two feet tall. So like, oh. it was like pretty obvious. I was like, it became pretty obvious that even being in the desert, things can definitely try thrive with proper care and nurturing. So I just took it upon myself to learn about mushrooms as much as I can, just self-study. And then, you know, I realized that growing mushrooms isn't really that hard. It's hmm. just tedious. So I just, I just keep doing it. The just keep mushrooming became kind of like my personal mantra. I was just chanted in my head because like sometimes <laughs> I'm like, this is, this is tedious. I'm just like, just keep mushrooming, just keep mushrooming. <laughs> That is so awesome. Yeah, and then yeah, and then I, I, I as I d dive more into the 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 field of mycology, I took inspiration from other known mycologists during this time, and they pretty much mostly started in a very non traditional way as well, no proper mm -hmm. training, and um, I was able to participate and watch. Paul Stamets, I don't know if you, you you ladies have heard of him, but basically he's like, it's like amazing mycologist and speaks about like this whole world of fungi and it's just like, like waves about like mycology and you know, right now there's a movement. I feel like there's a movement. Yes. Yes, yeah. so it, 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 he's definitely a huge part of that. So I, I saw him speak during a transformational festival and I just like felt something in me that I haven't just felt before. It's just like magical. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then mushroom. mushroom passion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So yeah, we were just growing like medicinal mushrooms then, and then one day me and my boo <laughs> said we, we maybe we should grow food. That's not a bad idea. First, at first we grew food for ourselves, and then you know we shared it to our friends, and then we saw the demand, and we were like, duh, <laughs> Las Vegas is definitely a, like a global food destination. So it just clicked, and everything, all that happened in a span of about three years. So wow. here we are. Yeah. Short. Yeah. All right. So when did you realize, you know, obviously you had this passion and it was growing like this amazing hobby. When did you realize that you were cultivating something super special? It's like mushroom artwork almost. Exactly. And that's the one thing that I, I probably stuck with it because I'm known to be the person that never sticks with anything. Right. I mean, it took me 10 years to graduate like college like, with a bachelor's degree. I kept changing my major. So and, student. exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I should have been a doctor by now, but no, <laughs> but yeah. And it, I, that's one thing that I really do like is like things that are beautiful, like aesthetic and that shows through the mushrooms. And then it's just like, it's another layer when you know like how much of a benefit they they offer like you know medicinally and then the flavor holy shit like mm -hmm. like, like once you 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 try you know other types of mushrooms other than button mushrooms it's like a whole different world so yeah. all of those combined um is just you know what keeps us going for sure yeah, yeah. i i so totally want to take one of your lion's manes and like turn it into a steak Yes. Yeah. Yes. That that's uh I know one home chef, um he, he actually smokes it. He does like a mushroom oh. rub on it and he also smokes it and he was like, I kid you not, it literally tastes like steak. I'm like, I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that because this is also interesting because we also have a growing plant based community um mm. of regular people and chefs that were all kind of, you know, either thinking about it or trying it or, you know, even like Louie and me just trying recipes. It doesn't mean that we're full plant-based, but we're right. definitely doing plant-based recipes. We definitely care about them. We care about the community. So tell us a little bit about the flavor. So pink oyster is a, a mushroom variety that we grow in the summer because they, they love the, the, the heat, their tropical mushroom. So a lot of, with its like strong flavor, a lot would compare it to like pork. So that's what my favorite mushroom to make into 
pork tacos and mm. also into bacon. So you literally like either bake it or saute it and just sprinkle mm. a little bit of like smoked salt and there you go. Ooh. It is very resemblant. It is very, very close and re resembles pork in that whole aspect and then um yeah I've, and then of course the the lion's mane i don't know if you've heard of kind of what the pe most people compare it to so it depends on how you cook it some people are like adamant that you know it tastes like lobster but to me it's always uh, i've heard that yeah it, it's like lobster or, or crab but then some people are like oh it tastes like chicken so i'm like well if lobster and chicken had a baby and then you mix <laughs> in like <laughs> you mix in like the health food aspect the that's you <laughs> it's like you're still imagining <laughs> that's what it tastes like because like you know you can make no crab cakes with it because right. of how the texture it just pulls apart um and then you could also make vegan chicken nuggets with it because of that stringy right. stringy texture so you just like batter it up and fry it and then you like pull it open it's like no this is chicken so yeah. you know it all all of that and of course like i i am not like a a chef like i cook here and there and i i do post like recipes on our website but i leave it to the experts and you know they they come back to me and then they tell me what they came up with and I'm just like mind blown like all the creativity that the home chefs are are are, are showing us and of course also the chefs that we work with regularly now which is you know less than a handful hopefully it's it's growing in time <laughs> oh it's gonna grow I know that you're not like a full like nutritionist or anything but what are some of the things that you've learned and maybe that you've felt by it's eating more mushrooms yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, our most popular uh, mushroom that offers the health benefits would definitely be the lion's mane. It's the star because that's kind of the, like, the whole craze when it comes to like supplements these days, like mm -hmm. take lion's mane supplements, lion's mane powder. And what it offers, if you actually take it on a regular basis, and it's proven, is that it has a NGF or nerve growth factor. And basically it kind of like um, yeah, it, it revitalizes like your neurons in your brain and wow. it allows for like new neuron growth. Oh, and, yeah. Wow. So it's, it's amazing for, you know, Alzheimer's maybe? Health. Yeah, prevention of Alzheimer's. Um, my dog actually has like half of his face became like paralyzed and like he couldn't close his left eye. And I just get, gave him, you know, lion's mane powder like continuously. And now like it's been like improving wow. and that's yeah, yeah so i'm just like i don't know if it's the lion's mane but like it, it he, his health is improving so i want to I'll, I'll take it i'll take that into account yeah um yeah for sure and then, and besides that there's also the the mood factor like the mood alleviating factor for like um mild anxiety and all that you know so uh, yeah, I think some people were like, "Oh, maybe it's a placebo," but I think it's like now pretty, pretty self, pretty studied. Um, there's like studies in Japan that they've um, done that they did it in mice, and then they've they've proven that you know these mice actually have like a better life quality when given like lion's mane like on a daily basis. Wow! Yeah, exactly. Really? Totally willing to try. I mean, whatever works, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so you sell home grow kits too. Mm -hmm. Sell them on your website. Um, that way, people can grow their own gourmet mushrooms at home. So I know that you're like a super like nerding out on mycology and stuff. <laughs> so, so people who aren't nerding out and they just like want you know to try something fun or have a hobby, um, maybe not want to leave the house because we're in a pandemic, you know, um, and want to have everything in their house from them they can maybe get a home grow kit like that. So in very layman's terms, <laughs> mm -hmm. how does this work? Um, what kind of conditions do you need? Like what kind of space do you need to do something like this? It's actually yeah. pretty easy because it'll come in a box and that box, it, it will pretty much serve as it's like, tent oh. like it's humidity tent. So okay. like the box, you basically just tape it up and you put a plastic bag over the top and you poke some holes on the plastic bag and you slice it open and you spray it. And all of those three things that you need will come inside the kit. All you need probably, 
uh, additionally would be just like a knife to cut it open, like a clean knife to cut it open, but that's it. I, I just tell, you know, the customers that buy the, the grow kit is, you know, as long as they're getting ambient lighting, you know, mm -hmm. just not direct lighting, but there's a window in the room, that's it. And they just spray twice a day and they harvest their own gourmet mushrooms at home within one to two weeks. So wow. you, <laughs> that's the lifespan of a mushroom from like actual like spore, is it spore? proceed to growth like two weeks so that's that how fast they really grow from the the two-week point is actually that's already kind of uh i want to say three quarters of its life cycle okay. the whole cycle would be about eight weeks okay. but the 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 prior fast. prep and all that is done like here and then the the row growing stage goes into the grow kit Okay. That's so awesome. So, so <laughs> once the harvested, this grow kit can it be reused? Or that's what I was going to ask. Yes, yes. So that's uh, that's the beautiful thing about it is like you could actually harvest up to three times, maybe four. Um, but of really? course, gradually your harvest is going to be you know smaller, smaller. And lesser and lesser yeah. and lesser. Yes. Is there a particular room in the house that's uh, more suited Better, to growing yeah. mushrooms? Does that, does that kit like give, give off odor? Can I put it in like the middle of my living room or? So know? we've actually had customers that have placed it next to their bed in the kitchen Ooh. counter, <laughs> in the living room. Anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Anywhere, <laughs> Anywhere huh? or like in the bathroom too, you know? Uh, it's, there's I don't know really... about the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, that's, no. Yeah. That's a cross-contamination issue. Yeah. That, that, that's yeah. how, how I felt. But they were like, we're going on vacation and we need to be somewhere humid. I'm like, okay. So we've got a mycophile with us, the way. So a mushroom lover. So, so I didn't even know what the word meant. You, now you do. Now everybody yeah. knows, mycophile. Why is it bad to wash mushrooms? Wa wash wash mushrooms yeah, water. because it, it's actually it actually soaks up the water it becomes so soggy that you know it, the texture that people are actually looking for in a gourmet mushroom that takes it away plus you don't really need to wash them because they're not dirty we grow them aeroponically they're just like in shelves and then they get misted with fog and then once we harvest we uh take off the trimmings or like the leftover substrate where it connects to the to the block and then we put them in the box in your recipes i saw a lot of tearing so tearing the mushrooms as opposed to using a knife and cutting them mm -hmm. now is that also a texture thing then Yes, uh, I think it, it's just more enjoyable in the mouth when you have like the, the stringy kind of irregular textures and it almost uh, that mostly resembles meat in my opinion, mm -hmm. as opposed to it being like, like clean Cut. slices, right. unless you're going for, you know, like your, your mushroom steaks to where like the lion's mane, they'll cut it into like steaks. But even then, some chefs actually just like literally get like a whole mushroom and then just like crush it with like a skillet. Huh. Then, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, or so this, like- This whole like texture thing, is it like pulled pork or is that what we're trying to achieve with like the tearing and stuff? Yeah, pulled like pork stringy, or like, you know, like diced chicken. chicken. Yeah. 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 Shredded yeah. chicken, shredding mm -hmm. basically. That's, that's mm -hmm. so cool. Yeah. Okay. One more big question before we move on. This will be like picking your favorite child. Oh no. <laughs> what is your favorite mushroom? I really love the branched oyster mushrooms. It's the white mushrooms because like a simple saute, it tastes like chicken skin. And I mm. love chicken skin. Mm. I love, yeah. So, so it's like a mushroom chicharron. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Without having to like deep fry it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's definitely my favorite mushroom to eat. But as far as growing, definitely lion's mane. <laughs> mm. Lion's mane is my favorite mushroom to grow. It's just, you know, just like the hairy texture and just like how it looks, especially in person. It just makes my heart melt. <laughs> so, like an alien. Yes, like right? an alien. <laughs> like a child. <laughs> I'm going to have one of these lion's mane children in the house. <laughs> right. What? Me too. Me too. Please. <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to show and tell. And I'm like super excited for your show and tell. Are you going to show us mushrooms? What's going on? Show us. 
I mean, I could definitely do that. Let me just take my laptop with me and let's take you to the grill room. Yeah! <laughs> yeah that's so exciting! <laughs> All right, let's go, let's go. These are kind of like the incubation. Ooh, look at that. Whoa. Look okay. at that. They are like little aliens. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right? Now that I think about that, they're like, like sleeping aliens, baby aliens. You so know, they said where, that's where you like reproduce your mushrooms. Basically. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's where where kind of I like love all love making the... room. Reproduction <laughs> <laughs> room. Mush love. Yeah. Mush love. That's what it is. Here it is. Wow. Yeah. So, will yeah, the like, grow the grow kit? The grow kit that you can purchase, will it yield like that big of a mushroom? Yes, with proper care, it would yield this big. I've seen it actually yield bigger. Whoa. Yeah, for some, for, for like the less holes you poke, they actually, so this is like two mushrooms because I poked two holes in this. Uh -huh. But if you, you sliced open one hole, it would become like one big mushroom. Whoa. Yeah. How many pounds of mushrooms? Can you like actually harvest like within like a week? Right now, our capacity is between thirty to fifty pounds. That's a and lot. Our, yeah, it's a lot, and it's it's not enough. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's not enough. People are hungry for mushrooms, so we're hopefully with this new addition, we our ultimate goal is to bump it up to. Um, like 100 and eventually 200, but the capacity of this growth space would be up to 300 pounds a week. Now, is there anything special about like the Las Vegas climate that makes it like so super great for growing mushrooms? Actually, it's what we have here in the desert is everything against what mushrooms like. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so basically, the, uh, growing indoors is definitely beneficial or it's the only way you can grow mushrooms in the desert because you know you, you control the humidity you control the temperature um, but even then we still grow with the season so even though we're an indoor farm we we still say it's seasonal mushrooms because you know we don't want to be growing like a strain that loves to be in the 80s like in the winter time because like you know it's just not I guess not conscious as far as like our energy usage. For sure. Right. Yes. So, so the, definitely the humidity is a huge factor. But even then, with us like regulating humidity, we actually don't use that much water. We're going to move on to on the fly. 60 <laughs> seconds rapid fire questions. Favorite shroom entree? Mushroom chicharron. <laughs> Whoa, I want to have some of that. What's your favorite binge-worthy show? Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Teleportation. She's like the second one. Yeah. What's up with teleportation today? <laughs> Childhood favorite food. Sorbet this. The ice cream. Filipino ice cream. <laughs> Dream place to forage for fungi. Oh man, Oregon. Really? Somewhere in Oregon, wow. yeah. <laughs> Your mushroom growing music. FKJ, or the genre is called Vapor Soul, but FKJ, he's an artist. I don't know if you guys like listen to him, but he's he's a, he's a bomb. Well, Vapor? He's him, though. <laughs> Vapor. Vapor Soul? Vapor Soul is a genre, that's what Spotify is calling it, but as far as Ooh. like artists goes, it's FKJ. Your holiday side dish. Green bean casserole. I love green bean casserole. And then sprinkle it with like some crispy mushrooms on top, elevate Ooh. it a little bit, mm. yeah. Mmm. Comfort food craving. Uh, I want to say definitely lumpia. <laughs> <laughs> number one on your bucket list definitely travel more uh, i want to backpack in southeast asia you know thailand um like india uh, all, all the, the kind of like that whole part of the continent 
for We're sure. We're still hoping sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, last thing, Myrene, let's go ahead and sell it for Sundown Mushrooms. How do we reach you? What's going on? It's your time. Yes, so the easiest way to reach us is definitely through Instagram, and that's also where we kind of um, communicate with most of our customers. We post like our latest products. You know, we, we get creative with the products that we sell. So, and Instagram is always the first to know, even first before we post it up on our website. So, our Instagram is just Sundown Mushrooms, and our website is sundownmushrooms.com. And uh, we pop up everywhere around town, but we are regulars over at the Downtown Third Intuitive Foragers Farmers Market on Fridays from 9 a.m. to 2, and at Fresh 52 in Henderson, Sundays from 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. And uh, we, if we have one-off pop-ups, it's always listed at the bottom of our website in the footer. And that's it. Wonderful. We've never met a Michael file before. We're so excited to welcome you exactly. into the Sharp Chef podcast family. Anything Ooh. you need, let us know. You were great and so many good vibes going your way for a beautiful mushroom season. Thank you. And I'll have your grow kits your way. Yeah. Ladies, I got oh, you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we want our nerdy kids. Kit.